October 3rd, 1993, Mogadishu, Somalia. Two Black Hawks lie burning in the streets. Delta Force and Rangers are pinned down by thousands of hostile fighters. The extraction has turned into a nightmare. Radio chatter erupts with desperate calls for air support. Then, out of the darkness, comes a sound. Not the thundering roar you'd expect from a gunship. More like an angry hornet. A small black helicopter, barely larger than a minivan, drops into the streets of Mogadishu at rooftop level. Its miniguns light up the night. Another follows. Then another. For 18 straight hours, these tiny attack helicopters circled above the most dangerous urban battlefield in modern history, keeping American operators alive against impossible odds. Pentagon officials watching satellite feeds couldn't believe what they were seeing. These helicopters shouldn't have survived five minutes, but they did more than survive. They changed everything. This is the AH-6 Little Bird. The military calls it a light attack helicopter. Special operators call it the killer egg. And for over 40 years, it's been doing things that military aviation experts said were impossible. Flown exclusively by the Army's most elite helicopter pilots, the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, better known as the Night Stalkers, this egg-shaped gunship has participated in nearly every major American special operations mission since Grenada. What you're about to discover isn't just the story of a helicopter, it's the story of how America weaponized agility itself. Here's what doesn't make sense about the AH-6 Little Bird. By every conventional measure, this helicopter should be obsolete. It was based on a 1960s-era scout helicopter. It's tiny, just 33 feet long. It has almost no armor. Top speed? A modest 175 miles per hour. That's slower than some World War II fighters. Compare that to an Apache attack helicopter. The Apache is a flying tank, tons of armor, Hellfire missiles, 30 millimeter cannon, advanced targeting systems. The Apache represents everything modern military doctrine says an attack helicopter should be. Yet when America's most elite special operations forces need air support, they don't call for an Apache. They call for the little bird. Why? because the AH-6 breaks all the rules. In 2024, while other military helicopters were being phased out or replaced, the Night Stalkers did something unexpected. They didn't retire the Little Bird, they upgraded it, gave it the new designation MH-6R and AH-6R, committed to building 52 upgraded versions starting in fiscal year 2025. This wasn't nostalgia, this was strategic necessity. When the Army canceled its future attack reconnaissance aircraft program, a multi-billion dollar effort to build the next generation of attack helicopters, it created a vacuum. The military suddenly realized something. They'd been trying to replace a capability they didn't fully understand. Here's the first mystery. How does a 1960s era design remain irreplaceable in an age of drones and stealth technology? Second mystery. The Little Bird operates in conditions that would down larger helicopters. It lands on urban rooftops, flies through city streets at night, weaves between buildings, at speeds that test the limits of human reaction time. How? Third mystery. Every little bird pilot will tell you the same thing. Flying this helicopter is like nothing else in military aviation. The aircraft doesn't just respond to pilot input, it anticipates it. Veterans describe a connection with the machine that borders on telepathic. But here's the deepest mystery of all. In August 2024, Boeing delivered Thailand's first AH-6 Little Bird, a $103.8 million contract for just eight helicopters. That's roughly $13 million per aircraft. Small regional powers are lining up to buy this obsolete design. What do they know that conventional military wisdom misses? The answer lies in what the Little Bird was never supposed to become. To understand the Little Bird, you need to go back to 1980, to a disaster in the Iranian desert, Operation Eagle Claw, the mission to rescue American hostages in Tehran, a multi-service operation involving Marines, Navy, and Army. It should have been America's moment to showcase special operations capability. Instead, eight servicemen died when a helicopter collided with a C-130 in a sandstorm. The mission failed before it even reached Tehran. The military learned a brutal lesson. America didn't have a dedicated special operations aviation capability. The helicopters used weren't designed for the mission. The pilots weren't trained for it. The different service branches couldn't talk to each other properly. One year later, the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment was born. Task Force 158, as it was first called, pulled together the Army's best helicopter pilots and gave them a singular mission. Support Special Operations Forces anywhere, anytime, in any conditions. But here's what most people miss. They needed aircraft that could do things conventional helicopters couldn't. Enter the OH-6 Cayuse, nicknamed the Loach. 
It was originally designed in the 1960s as a light observation helicopter for the Vietnam War. Small, maneuverable, pilots called it the Flying Egg because of its distinctive bubble canopy and teardrop fuselage. But the Night Stalkers saw something else. They saw potential. They took the civilian MD-530 version, basically a commercial helicopter you could buy for business use, and transformed it, added stub wings for weapons, upgraded the engine, installed night vision systems, created two variants, the MH-6 for inserting operators and the AH-6 for attack missions. The transformation seemed modest, but it was revolutionary. Previous attack helicopters were designed around the idea that more is better, more armor, more weapons, more size. The little bird went the opposite direction. It asked a different question. What if the best defense isn't armor, but never getting hit in the first place? This philosophy would be tested in actual combat far sooner than anyone expected. October 1983, Grenada, Operation Urgent Fury. Eight little birds flew into combat for the first time. Six MH6S and two AH6 gunships. The mission, attack Fort Rupert, the Grenadian military headquarters. The little birds approached the capital city and immediately faced something no training could prepare them for, overwhelming anti-aircraft fire. They retreated, mission canceled. Most programs would have ended there, but here's what they missed. The Little Bird's real education didn't happen in Grenada. It happened six years later in the narrow streets of Panama City. December 1989, Operation Just Cause, the mission to capture Manuel Noriega. Four AH-6s swept in before the main invasion force, attacking Panamanian Defense Force headquarters at La Comandancia. This time, the Night Stalkers had figured out the Little Bird's true superpower. It wasn't about outgunning the enemy, it was about outpositioning them. One AH-6 took ground fire and crash-landed inside the Comandancia compound. The two pilots, pinned down for two hours by small arms fire, fought their way back to friendly forces, taking a PDF prisoner along the way for good measure. The mission succeeded because the little bird could go places other helicopters couldn't even approach. But the world really noticed the killer egg in Mogadishu. October 3rd, 1993. The Battle of Mogadishu, better known now as Black Hawk Down. The mission was supposed to last one hour. A quick raid to capture lieutenants of Somali warlord Muhammad Farah Adid. Delta Force and Rangers would fast rope in, grab the targets, and extract. Then, the unthinkable, two Black Hawks went down. Super 6-1, piloted by Cliff Wolcott. Then Super 6-4, piloted by Mike Durant. What was supposed to be a one-hour operation turned into an 18-hour battle in the heart of enemy territory. This is where the Little Bird legend was forged. Six MH6s and multiple AH6s operated continuously throughout the night. Using only night vision goggles, the Night Stalker pilots flew between buildings, down city streets, through power lines and debris. The AH6s conducted gun strafing runs with their 7.62 mm miniguns and fired 70 mm rockets at Somali militia positions. Wait, it gets more intense. One MH6 crew did something that military aviation experts still study. They landed in the streets near a crash site under active fire to rescue wounded rangers. Chief Warrant Officer Carl Meyer brought his little bird down in an intersection. His co-pilot provided suppressive fire from the cockpit while they loaded casualties. They shouldn't have survived. The helicopter was sitting still, the most vulnerable position possible. But the little bird's small size and maneuverability meant it could touch down in spaces where a Black Hawk couldn't even hover. Here's what most people don't know about that night. The AH-6s actually ran out of ammunition, completely Winchester. So the pilots did something unprecedented. They started engaging targets with their personal M4 rifles, leaning out of the cockpit, dropping grenades on enemy positions during low passes. Think about that. Attack helicopter pilots conducting impromptu bomb runs by hand-tossing grenades. The Little Bird proved it wasn't just a weapons platform. It was an extension of special operations forces themselves. But the real evolution came after 9-11. Afghanistan, early October 2001. The Night Stalkers deployed Little Birds as part of Task Force's Dagger and Sword. These tiny helicopters flew missions across the Hindu Kush Mountains, peaks over 16,000 feet, inserting operators deep into Taliban territory. The Little Bird excelled in Afghanistan's unique challenges. The thin air at high altitude reduced the effectiveness of larger helicopters. The Little Bird's power-to-weight ratio meant it could operate where others struggled. Then came the weapon system upgrades that transformed the AH-6 from formidable to devastating. Layer 1. Conventional Wisdom 
The Little Bird carries miniguns and rockets. Standard light attack helicopter loadout. Layer 2, but actually, the weapon configuration is completely modular. Twin M134762 mm miniguns, or GAU1950 caliber Gatling guns, or M260 rocket pods firing Hydra 70 rockets, or AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, the same tank killers used by Apache helicopters, or even FIM-92 Stinger air-to-air -air missiles. The Night Stalkers can configure each little bird specifically for the threat profile of every single mission. Layer 3, here's the real kicker. The weapon systems are mounted on lightweight universal pylons. A team can completely change the little bird's armament configuration in under an hour. One moment, it's configured for anti-personnel work. An hour later, it's tank hunting. This modularity means four little birds can deploy with four completely different weapon systems, creating a mini air force with unprecedented tactical flexibility. No other attack helicopter in the world offers this level of mission adaptability in such a small package. The Little Bird's impact on modern warfare extends far beyond its impressive combat record. First, it fundamentally changed special operations doctrine. Before the Little Bird, the assumption was that air support meant calling in fast jets or larger attack helicopters. The problem? Both create massive signatures. Jets can't loiter. Large helicopters can't operate in tight spaces. The Little Bird proved that organic, persistent air support, helicopters dedicated exclusively to special operations, was not just possible, but essential. Today, every major special operations force in the world has adopted this model. Second, it revolutionized urban warfare tactics. The Little Bird can land on rooftops, fly through city streets, insert operators directly onto buildings. This created entirely new tactical possibilities. Targets that were previously considered inaccessible became vulnerable. After Mogadishu, military planners worldwide studied the Little Bird's performance. The result? a fundamental shift in how forces approach urban combat operations. Third, it preserved American special operations aviation capability when it might have disappeared. When the Army canceled FARA in 2024, their next-generation reconnaissance and attack helicopter, military planners suddenly realized they had a problem. FARA was supposed to replace both the Kiowa Scout helicopter and eventually take on roles performed by the Little Bird. The cancellation forced a reassessment. As SOCOM's Rotary Wing program executive put it, that changed our equation because that was going to become the arm platform that was going to take the role of the AH-6. Instead of replacement, the military chose resurrection. The Block 3 upgrade, now designated AH-6R and MH-6R, includes advanced avionics, improved sensors, enhanced communications, and potential hybrid electric propulsion systems. 52 upgraded little birds will fly missions well into the 2040s and beyond. Fourth, it's reshaping international special operations capabilities. Thailand's $103.8 million purchase of eight AH-6s in 2024 signals growing international interest. Saudi Arabia requested 36 aircraft. Jordan expressed interest. These aren't purchases of obsolete technology. They're investments in proven capability. For smaller nations building special operations forces, the Little Bird offers something unique, a complete package of precision strike, insertion capability, and close air support in one affordable platform. The United States maintains its advantage not through technology restrictions, but through the Night Stalkers themselves. The training, doctrine, and operational experience that turns the Little Bird from a capable helicopter into a legendary weapon system. So where does the killer egg go from here? The AH-6R upgrade program provides the answer, and it's not what you might expect. Boeing and SOCOM aren't just updating electronics. They're reimagining what the Little Bird can become. The proposed upgrades include a hybrid turbine electric propulsion system that could dramatically increase speed, range, and fuel efficiency. Advanced rotor blades borrowed from the AH-64 Apache program, enhanced avionics that integrate seamlessly with drone systems. But here's the fascinating part. They're also exploring autonomous and optionally manned variants. The unmanned Little Bird demonstrator already exists. In 2006, Boeing successfully demonstrated an Apache remotely controlling a Little Bird's weapon systems while the Little Bird operated miles away. In 2010, an unmanned Little Bird completed a fully autonomous flight using LiDAR to avoid obstacles. Imagine a future where manned Little Birds operate alongside autonomous versions, multiplying force without multiplying risk to pilots. The question that remains unanswered Will the little bird ever truly be replaced? 
After 40 years of predictions that newer technology would make it obsolete, the little bird is now set to fly for at least another 20 years. The AH-6R program runs through the 2040s. Current Night Stalker pilots may spend their entire careers flying variants of a design that first flew when their grandparents were young. Perhaps that's the real lesson of the killer egg. Sometimes revolutionary capability doesn't come from starting over. It comes from perfecting what works. Remember that sound in Mogadishu, like an angry hornet descending from the darkness? American adversaries around the world have learned to recognize it. It means the Night Stalkers have arrived. And when you hear that sound, when you see that distinctive egg-shaped silhouette dropping into the night, you're witnessing something rare in military history, a weapon system that refused to become obsolete by continuously redefining what's possible. The Little Bird isn't just America's most lethal small attack helicopter, it's proof that sometimes the deadliest weapon is the one nobody sees coming.